finally am making this kind of berry, warm berries, autumn look that I probably promised four weeks ago. <laughs> I don't know. So if you don't know, I am in the middle of renovations. Check out my Instagram. I just put a picture uh, this morning, yesterday. I don't even remember. There's renovations going on everywhere. There's renovations in our house and the house next door plus the country move. So I haven't been making videos, I haven't been watching other people's videos, I haven't been commenting as much as I normally do, and I'm really missing it. It's kind of like, yay, I get to talk to you guys again, um, when, because I have set time aside. There is a painter in the house, uh, but he's very quiet, so I think this will be okay. Uh, next door they are doing huge demolition work, so you might hear a little bit of that. But we're just gonna, you know, we're just gonna do this. I am gonna post a um, picture on my Instagram of my temporary shooting setup. And I have now kind of come to terms with, it's gonna, this is gonna be temporary. I'm gonna have a temporary setup for a little while now. That's just the way it is. There's nothing I can do about it. Probably for about a month, over a month. Oh my God, I just realized, yeah, when my floor is gonna go in my walk-in wardrobe, it's gonna be over a month that I'm gonna keep doing this. So I'm just gonna do it and plan it properly and attempt to do once a week videos and then start the new year. Once we're at 2015 in my new shooting setup, new everything and it'll be fantastic. But bear with me until then, please. And also, so I'm gonna be doing this look. I'm gonna be doing my whole face, but it's mostly about the eyes. I'm also gonna be doing a lot of um, tips again for hooded eyes as I'm doing it because there's so many things you need to kind of take into account when you don't have the classically proportionate eyelid, <laughs> so to speak. I think I'm gonna call it that. Um, anyways, let's get started. So I'm gonna start with a tinted moisturizer. Mine is the NARS Pure Radiant Tinted Moisturizer. This is a small, tiny kind of size that you can get from Sephora's. And the color is Alaska. I'm going to use my, I use this every opportunity I get now. This is the Marc Jacobs The Face Brush 2. It's a tinted moisturizer. I don't really need to use a brush, but I am so, it just, look at how well it fits. It just fits. I often will squeeze a foundation brush to make that shape. So this is already done for me. So I am so happy about it. Also loving the um, tinted moisturizer. I'm kind of liking less coverage right now. I'm using the Lorac primer. This tube is pretty much gone, but somehow miraculously, there's always more. Just using my finger to prime my eyelids really well because this is gonna help the kind of plummy dark colors to stay on well. So I'm gonna use the Knock on Wood uh, by Wet n Wild Trio, I love it. And if you can hear, by the way, if you can hear banging in the background, it's not actually renovations happening in our house, it's next door. Um, they're converting a pub into luxury apartments and oh my God. That's gonna be years of fun, but that is why we bought here. That's gonna be you know, a good investment in the long run. And I am patting it, the color, onto my lid with a MAC 239. Like, I'm really packing it in. I am so in love with this color. If you have green eyes, this color is absolutely insanely great. But because I'm combining it with browns, it also works really well with blue eyes. Anything works with brown eyes. You brown eyed girls, don't ever wish for blue eyes. You are the luckiest girls ever because you can wear whatever makeup colors. Brown is such a good neutral face. So this isn't too tidy, the edges aren't good or anything like that right now. I'm just really making sure to pack the color in. So there is a brown on this palette and you can use that, but because I am so in love with my NARS Surabaya, the kind of the redder, kind of almost terracotta shade, I just think it suits this look so, so, so well. I'm using my Sigma E25. 
So look straight on, like really literally straight on and mark a spot where you can see it just above your crease. Kind of start the movement off there. If you have footed eyelids, it's, I cannot stress how important this trick is to do because otherwise you really don't see any of the crease work that you're going to be doing. So always make sure it's just above. Now, that is probably above your natural crease. Don't worry too much. If you start studying makeup pictures, you will realize that there is a lot of people that go above their natural crease. And don't worry too much about the fallout because we can easily clean that up. So I am kind of going unusually pretty much all the way to um, like the bridge of my nose. I'm going really high next to the eyebrow here, like where my eyebrow is lowest, and then I'm going out. And, I, and important for her to die, girls, don't go past this. You don't want to drag your eye down. I'm going to take a clean brush. Is this a Sigma or a MAC? I think this is a MAC that feels like a MAC, MAC 217. And I'm really going to blend all of those edges out. Always blend way longer than you think you need to blend. Bend. Blend. So keep blending. I make it super, super. That's how you kind of like, yeah, smoking out is obviously adding color, but you just blend and blend and blend until the line becomes non-existent. There's no line, there's just like a fade. So now there's kind of like a blurry shadow around my eye. It is very high. I've left very little kind of bare skin. And this completely depends on your own amount of lid space. Some people have a big distance between eyebrows and, um, you know, when your eye is open between here and here. So eyebrows increase essentially, but I don't. So I just leave a tiny space. And really keep going around the edges with your clean 217 or if you're using Sigma E25 and just super, super blend it around. I'm going to use two scandalized pencils, the black one and the brown one. And this is the easiest line you're ever going to do because you really don't need to pay much attention at all. I'm just smudging it into the roots with the black liner first so really kind of smudge 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 and then I'm taking I'm sorry this is a Tom Ford brush if I can find it but it is the best for this job this is a Tom Ford number 15 brush I mean you can absolutely use but Sephora has kind of an equivalent you can use a pencil brush for this job but I'm just in love with the Tom Ford and just smudge everything into the lash line, wing it out with the brush a little bit. So I didn't wing it out with the liner at all, but I'm kind of winging it out with whatever color it's getting caught in the, in the brush. And straight after I'm going in with the brown. I want to get that black in first because it provides the depth, I would say. And I'm going to smudge that. I have so many brown eyeliners, like dark brown, and nothing just kind of gave me the effect I wanted because this brown is, what is it called? It's called bronze actually. It's just so warm that I, wa I wanted that warm, warm feeling. I'm also taking the brown under, just kind of halfway under my lashes, and then I'm taking it into the waterline. I'm going back in with my 217. I haven't added any color to the brush whatsoever. It still kind of has Surabaya in it. Um, but I am just blending the outer V out. I love this kind of a liner look because it is the easiest liner in the world to do because you don't have to be good at it. In fact, if you're not good at it, it's probably better. Just make sure that liner is not like halfway up your lid. You often see people with a big gap between the roots of their lashes. 
and the liner. Now, if you have the perfect dark brown liner, warm, you don't need to do this double lining and be, you know, difficult about it like I am. I want to add a little bit more depth, so I'm taking the Wet n Wild Black, it's called Panther, I think. I'm just using the same brush, I'm economical like that, and I am putting it just on the outside and doing the tiniest possible movement, just for that extra little bit of depth. You know, if I need to blend it out with some more Surabaya again, I will. I zoomed out a little bit because mascara doesn't need to be so precise. I'm using CoverGirl Plum Crusher. I want to just the mirror as well in their extensions version. To be honest, I think it's exactly the same as the original Plum Crusher, but I mean that's not a bad thing because it's one of my all-time favorite mascaras, but still. I'm going to do a couple of coats. I'm not curling my eyelashes because I still have the LVL lash treatment. I have been loving that by the way. Um, so no lash curling, but if you have straight lashes, do curl them up because that is a huge, huge help. I also decided to add some of the black on my upper waterline so I have the brown under and the black and this kind of makes sense to me because I want the black to kind of really accentuate the roots of my eyelashes and then the brown makes my eyes look bluer so you know best of both worlds I'm going to do some under eye concealing I'm using the CC eye cream in 22 by Bourjois oh my god I love this stuff I'm not doing tons and I'm kind of keeping it quite far away and I am using the MAC 224. 224 is still my all-time favorite concealer brush. It's amazing on blemishes as well, even though it's so big. It just like airbrushes everything in. I'm using a little bit of Smashbox. This is called Halo Hydrating and Perfecting Powder in line. And it is one of those fun, I, I like a fun little thing. So you have to kind of do that and it, sorry, the other way, do that, and it just grinds. So I guess that there is a uh, like a compact powder under, and then it just grinds it up. But I've been loving it. I would kind of compare. It's a similar thing to Mac MSFs. So it feels like a very light mineral powder. I'm just going around. Well, the center of my face, mostly. I'm using a sleek pencil for my eyebrows and it's a pencil in one end. It's one of those kind of triangular type pencils and then it has spoolie in the other end. Triangular like the Tom Ford, but obviously I was gonna say a quarter of the price. It's not a quarter of the price of Tom Ford. It's a tenth, it's a hundredth of a price of Tom Ford. What is my color actually? I don't even know, hold on. Medium, 717. I'm just kind of lightly tracing my brows. I think I finally need them redone. I've been thinking about this, and if you guys have any experience in it, Please tell me. I'm following this girl that does amazing eyebrow tattoos, like super, super natural here in London. And, or maybe she was Essex, I don't remember. Um, anyways, uh, I'm thinking of having that done. I would also like to have my top waterline tattooed. I saw, I think it was in a MMNL um, video when Michelle was having her top waterline tattooed. And it freaks me out, but at the same time, I really like the idea. So I want a tiny pip of, pip, <laughs> pop of color more. So I'm gonna take the Milani Fuchsia, hold on, what is this called? Must Have Fuchsia 616 and a wet, slightly wet, slightly damp, uh, 239 
and I am just going to pop this just in the middle nowhere else just for like that little pop of color I'm not taking it to the inner corner I want the inner corners to stay quite dark Okay, and I'm sorry if I'm being repetitive, but I'm going to use the Bare Minerals Glee again. This has just become, I had so forgotten about it, and um, this is the Bobbi Brown blush brush. And when I started doing my using it up, I remember how much I loved this. It's just, for me, if you're anywhere close to my skin tone, I'm a MAC NC25, and I'm quite yellow, I would say. This just does the most natural flush for, like, this is actually the color I blush. This is totally the color I blush, so I love it. And I guess it's the mineral powder texture. So now I am using it up, but now I just have to buy it again. I only have the tiniest bit left um, because I love it so much. Also, a little bit of Wet n Wild's uh, Cabana bronzer why is it called bronzer is it really called a bronzer bronzer spf it really is called it's the reserve your cabana that everybody loves but i don't understand why this is called a bronzer like who is so pale that something like that is a bronzer tiny bit of highlighting Now I contemplated doing a kind of a more of a berry lip with this, but it's not what I do. Like when I have eyes that are kind of smoked out, I, I don't combine it with lips. When I do lips, I do lips and almost nothing else. I'm trying to be Persian about that. So I am going to do nude lips. I am using the number seven nude lip pencil. So this is a very nude pencil. Nothing much to it. And I am also using Rimmel number 14. It's a little bit movier than I would wear normally. And that is because I kind of want to, there's a little hair in there. I want to keep to that kind of cool theme. But then I am going to add a little bit of White Russian by Buxom on top. Just a tiny bit. Because whenever I use a Movi nude, if I don't have any gloss, I feel like I look, my lips look a little bit dead. So that is the finished look. I hope you enjoy it. And I will see you definitely next week. I just have to... Accept the fact that this house is going to be a building site for a little while and um, I'm just doing these videos in my weird setup right here. Maybe I'll take an Instagram and like a photo and show you guys because this is not my normal setup. Anyways, uh, thank you so much for watching uh, and I will see you again next week. Bye!